This video is about analyzing full wave rectifiers. How do they work and what is their output voltage? Here's a simple full wave rectifier. It has four diodes and a load, often called a bridge rectifier because of its similarity in appearance to a resistor bridge. This is the most common rectifier configuration. This one also has a step down transformer to reduce its output voltage. The input is an AC voltage. If a transformer is used, the input voltage is applied across the primary winding. The output is a DC voltage because it does not reverse polarity. Unlike the output of a battery, however, this voltage doesn't have a steady level. This rectifier has an AC voltage of 120 RMS volts with a frequency of 60 Hz. The step down transformer has a turns ratio of 5 to 1, and the load has a resistance of 1 kilo ohm. Let's calculate the peak value and the average value of the output voltage. First, we must convert the input RMS voltage to peak voltage. To convert RMS voltage to peak voltage, simply divide the RMS voltage by 0 0.707. The peak value of 120 volts RMS is 170 volts. Next, we must determine the peak voltage across the secondary winding of the transformer. Because the turns ratio of this transformer is 5 to 1, that means the output voltage will be one-fifth of the input voltage. Dividing 170 peak volts by 5 gives us a secondary output of 34 peak volts. Finally, we can now determine the peak voltage across the load. The voltage across the transformer's secondary winding begins rising toward 34 volts. If we use the constant voltage model for the diodes, they start conducting when the voltage reaches 1.4 volts, which is 0.7 volts across each of the two forward bias diodes in series with the load, which allows current to flow. And the load voltage rises to 32.6 volts. The maximum load voltage in this case is 34 volts across the secondary winding minus 0.7 volts across each of the two forward bias diodes. That's 34 volts minus 1.4 volts or 32.6 volts. The maximum reverse voltage across the two reverse bias diodes called peak inverse voltage or PIV will be 33.3 volts. The secondary voltage drops toward 0 volts. The load voltage falls with it. Finally, the input voltage drops below 1.4 volts and the two diodes stop conducting. With no current flowing through the load, the voltage across it is zero. The input voltage reverses polarity and begins falling toward minus 34 volts. The other two diodes start conducting and current flows and the load voltage rises to 32.6 volts. The peak inverse voltage across the two reverse bias diodes will be 33.3 volts. Finally, the secondary voltage will return to zero and the load voltage falls to zero. Then the cycle repeats, producing a pulsed, DC voltage with a peak amplitude of 32.6 volts. But what is the average voltage? For a full wave rectifier, the average voltage, also called the effective voltage, is its peak value times 0.636. In this case, it's 20.7 volts and is the DC voltage. The red line shown here indicates the average voltage. The area of the curve above the red line is equal to the area under the line. They average out. Although the output does have an average value,
it varies constantly and is almost always either higher or lower than the average. We need to level it out. Putting a capacitor in parallel with the load helps do this. Recall that a capacitor opposes the change in voltage. The resulting output is much smoother as shown here. The peak voltage is still 32.6 volts. But what is the new value of the average voltage? If you draw a line through the middle of the ripple voltage, you can see that the area of the curve above the line is equal to the area below the line. That means the average voltage is the peak voltage minus one half of the ripple voltage. All that is left to find is the peak to peak ripple voltage. We can then plug it into the equation and find the average load voltage. Recall the equation for current in a capacitor. We can approximate it using algebra. In this approximation, delta V, or the ripple voltage, is what we must find. Delta T is the period of the output voltage, which we already know. It's always 8.33 milliseconds with a 60 hertz input voltage for a full wave rectifier. We also know the capacitance, 47 microfarads. Finally, we know the approximate average load current that flows through the capacitor when it discharges. It's calculated by dividing the average voltage without a capacitor by the load resistance. In this case, we have 20.7 milliamps. I pointed out in a previous video that some of you may be uncomfortable with using an approximation for this calculation. You may be accustomed to spending a lot of time and effort to obtain exact circuit values and believe we should be doing that here. The reality, though, is that these circuits just aren't that precise anyway. The capacitor alone usually has a tolerance of more than 20%. Plugging in the known values and rearranging to solve for the ripple voltage gives us 3.67 peak-to-peak -peak volts. That's delta V. Replacing delta V with 3.67 volts gives us the average load voltage of 30.8 volts DC. Look how much smoother and higher the output voltage is just by putting a filter capacitor in parallel with the load. 